What is up, my friends, and welcome to Studio de Jeffrey on the day where the Cowboys are doing more stuff. I appreciate you guys checking this out. What I'm going to talk about is who all the Cowboys have kept, what is left to do, and then I believe I'll run a two or three round mock draft now that we kind of know where we're going to be sitting heading into the NFL draft, and we'll get all that knocked out courtesy. Of my friends at Bet Online, because having a little action on something makes everything more exciting. You don't believe me? Check college basketball. None of us care, but we have a bracket, so we care. Tried NASCAR, done it before. Use the promo code Believe B L E A V at BetOnline.ag, and you will be all squared away for whatever it is that you enjoy watching. Okay, so get up in there, have a little fun, be responsible, but use the promo code B L E A V Believe at betonline.ag, and you'll get a nice little sign-up bonus on that first wager, that first deposit. Let's cook. Okay, the Cowboys signed a couple of dudes, which kind of thought they might. Cowboys have signed running back Ronald Jones. He is um, he's pretty just a decent, solid NFL running back for five years now, four years with Tampa, one year with Kansas City. I really liked him coming out in the draft. He had a really nice year with Tampa in 2020 when he's getting over five yards of pop. Um, but what does that signing mean? They got a guy. That's what they were doing. They got a guy. He's a local guy. He's capable. Uh, and honestly, I think it's perfect. They don't have to worry about running back when it comes to the draft. They're not stopped from worrying about running back when it comes to the draft. You now got Tony Pollard on a one-year deal to be the dude. And you have another capable, experienced NFL player behind him for when Tony goes, I'm tired. I would like to step off the field now. Ronald Jones goes in. You don't have a guy that's going to be splitting with Tony Pollard. You have a guy that will be relieving Tony Pollard when he needs that. So, love it. Because once again, what did the Cowboys do? They said, what do we need to do on this roster without overdoing it to make sure we can be ready to draft and to make our team better? For this year going forward. So Ronald Jones, boom, you're in. Next guy they signed today, Chuma Idoga, who is another dude that was a third round draft pick. He started a decent number of games in the NFL. They view him as having tackle guard flexibility. He's really been a tackle in the NFL. And this one is harder to give you a definitive, this is what he will do, but he's going to be a backup offensive lineman. And so offensive line is the one spot on the Cowboys that I don't think is dialed totally in yet. If you went and played today, the line is fine, but you'd be going to play with Tyron Smith playing left tackle, Tyler Smith playing left guard, Tyler Biotish playing center, Zach Martin, Terrence Steele on the right side. Uh, and I don't mind that at all. I think Tyler Smith can be great at guard. I think he could be a good tackle. I think he could be awesome at guard. But the Cowboys want him to be the tackle, and so it's just a little bit off in my brain right now that they're doing everything that I would do versus what I'm used to them doing, which is like, hey, we've got our young guy that we've drafted and are developing, and we want him to be tackle, so we're going to put him at tackle, and we've got to figure out what we're going to do at guard. That could still happen in the draft, but as of today, you'd be going into a season with Tyron at left tackle, and that, I know, is just nervous town for a lot of people. You say to yourself, ooh, do we have a capable backup left tackle? Are we going to plan to yo-yo it again if Tyron gets hurt? Move Tyler again? Play somebody else at guard? Is Idoga capable of being that guy that is either the backup at, or I guess the backup at left tackle and left guard? Eh. I wanted them to sign an offensive lineman. I wanted them to sign an offensive lineman that was more of a starter level player. Um, but they're okay. If they're injury free, they're totally fine. We'll see what happens if they lose a guy. But running back room is now good. If you want to add someone, you can. You are not tied to Ronald Jones beyond a year. I have not seen the contract, but I promise uh, you're not tied to Tony Pollard beyond this year. So could they still use a day one or day two draft pick on a running back? They absolutely could. Could they still use a day one draft pick on an offensive lineman or a day two draft pick on an offensive lineman? They absolutely could. Could they still use an early pick on a corner? They absolutely could. But with Stephon Gilmore this year, you good. 
Um, could they use, I'm trying to think of other things they've done. Could they use an early pick on a receiver? Yeah, they could. And I am seeing, I see a bunch of people getting a little excited on the internet about how maybe their D hop dream is still alive. I guess I would be surprised if they found a way to add Deandre Hopkins, unless the Cardinals were interested in Michael Gallup and you could work out some sort of swap that involves you giving them a pick as well, which I got to tell you, I'd be down for. Going with DeAndre Hopkins, Brandon Cooks, and CeeDee Lamb. <laughs> that would be kick-ass. Um, so I know for a lot of people this is challenging. But you are going to have to say to yourself, good job, Cowboys. Good job, Cowboys front office. Because they are freaking killing the game right now this offseason. They're actually using non-premium draft picks to add potentially premium players who at worst are pretty good players. Um, they are clearing out money and moving it back to be able to fire extra bullets this year, which actually is not my favorite thing, but what do I care right now? Right now you're getting ready for 2023 and 2023 going to be fun because now you've got a real wide receiver core. Now you got a real group of corners uh, you got a bad contract off the books and replaced the player on the cheap, Ronald Jones for Zeke. The Cowboys are doing a really good job this offseason. So now I look at, all right, what is left to be done? Because for the Cowboys, guys who are gone, Dalton Schultz is gone, Connor McGovern is gone, Noah Brown is gone, Zeke is gone. Those are your offensive players that are gone that were on the team last year. Well, Zeke has replaced Ronald Jones, and that is fine. I think it's actually an upgrade because it means just Pollard's going to get the ball more. Uh, Noah Brown is gone, and Brandon Cooks is on the team. That is a giant upgrade. Life is good. Connor McGovern is gone. Chuma Idoga is on the team. That's probably a downgrade, but we're replacing a guy who's leaving. Um, it's not a downgrade if everybody's healthy because it just means that Tyler Smith will be mashing people at guard with Tyron Smith playing tackle. Dalton Schultz is gone, and that is the wild card. Dalton Schultz is not replaced at the moment. The Cowboys don't have to replace Dalton Schultz. You can play with Jake Ferguson and Peyton Hendershot and Sean McEwen as your tight end room. You can. I am not as sold on the idea that that is a really good tight end room, as a lot of people seem to be. I don't think tight end in the first two rounds is off the board for this team at all. In fact, one of my favorite picks at 26 would be a tight end. Maybe I'll tell you that when I do mock draft V 4.0 or whatever number I'm on here in just a couple of minutes. So stick with me. Um, so that's the guys that are gone on offense. No problems. In fact, you're better guys that are gone on defense. Anthony Brown replaced with Stefan Gilmore. You're better. At the moment, Jonathan Hankins and Carlos Watkins are gone and not replaced. So our new biggest area of need for the Cowboys is big boy defensive tackle. Good news about that is big boy defensive tackle. I'll take this the wrong way. Just power ranking things is the least important part of your defense. You can do it. I hope they still sign Jonathan Hankins and bring him back because I do think that he's a good player and he helped this defense. Uh, and he'd probably be on the cheap. I'd like him to bring him back. Bring back Carlos Watkins, too, if you want. I don't think either one's going to cost much. At the moment, Dante Fowler Jr. is gone, uh, but they would still like to bring him back, and that's possible. Maybe you'll bring back Hankins and Fowler. Anthony Barr at the moment is gone, and that doesn't hurt because I told people throughout the year, and it hurt my heart because I like Anthony Barr, and he was a good player in the league for a long time. He was not helping your defense. So... You move it along, and you see what the two young LSU guys got next to Leighton Van Der Esch. Um, that's okay. They're good. They're ready to roll. You're not forced to do anything. Like a run, a run stopping D tackle. Are they going to have to add one to the roster at some point? Yeah, but do you have to use a premium pick on that? No. You could pick one up after the draft. You could grab a guy in the fourth or fifth round. So they're not forced to do anything early in the draft, which is the goal for an NFL team, according to me. So now let me click clicky clicky three rounds. I'm going to swap the screen over to a mock draft simulator. And we are going to roll here. We're going to start the draft. Do, 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 do. 
I would use a different simulator than Pro Football Focus, but I'll be honest, I can't find one that I think is better at the moment. I need people to update their rankings, and Pro Football Focus at least lets me move the board more in favor of the public over their board and change things. So now in this scenario, my God, this is fun. In this scenario, there are two wide receivers that make it to number 26 that in mock drafts by the fun big name guys, there's a chance that does not happen. Jackson Smith and Jigba and Zay Flowers. If they both make it, boy, we are considering and we are considering hard. Osiris Torrance, offensive god from Florida, we are considering. Um, let me scroll down and see if I just think they have anybody uh, ranked way wrong. No, I think we're good. I think we can stick at the top here. Okay, so names that I would be considering if I were the Cowboys. Osiris Torrance. Emmanuel Forbes, corner, Mississippi State. Mozzie Smith, Michigan D-tackle. I know there are people out there that love, love, love him. I do too. I just don't know if he's ever going to have an NFL sack. He's going to be a straight-up, on-the-ball bully. Uh, and that's an exaggeration. He'll have an NFL sack. But let me get his college stats real quick. Mozzie Smith. What you'd be banking on there is that you could get out of his athleticism for that size more than in his three years of college football, a half sack total. He's just a plugger. And I don't want to use the first round pick on that. So we're going to let that go. Will McDonald, the fourth Iowa state defensive and well edge, whatever, um, really fun pass rush tools in terms of length, athleticism, explosiveness, turn in the corner, Bad run defender. Uh, that is a developmental player, but when you have really good pass rushing tools, you get picked pretty early. Anton Harrison, Oklahoma left tackle. I would consider that as well, especially if the, as the Cowboys, you were willing to say uh, that Tyler Smith can be a career guard, then Anton Harrison could be your Tyron Smith replacement. But I also am a firm believer in the reason I did this is because I think the Cowboys have done a really nice job of not being forced to do anything. And because I'm not forced to do anything, I am picking my best player available. And in this case, Pro Football Focus and I agree, that is Jackson Smith and Jigba, Ohio State wide receiver. Bang. And if it turns out that Michael Gallup is going to be great this year, sweet. I've got four really good receivers to rotate in and three spots on most plays. But Jackson Smith and Jigba is going to get on the field, baby. And it's going to be lovely. Um, and then we get to the second round and we're looking and we're looking and now I'm going to have to decide what am I going to do? Um, and once again, I'm not forced to do anything. I think BJ Ojolari as an edge player is an option. Adebaware at Northwestern is a 280 plus pounder that ran a four, four, nine at the combine. I don't. He's dangerously in tweener territory for me where I don't know if he'd be very good at either outside or inside the NFL because he's not really big and strong enough on the inside. He's not really an edge rusher either. But that sort of athlete at that sort of size, Dan Quinn might really enjoy that. Uh, what I'm going to do is once again, we're going to pick the best player available and the best player available is going to be B.J. Ojolari. And now I've replaced Dante Fowler. Look at that. I'm just cruising along, picking the best player, having a great time. There's no way Jackson Smith and Jake was going to make it to 26. Uh, and in the third round, once again, let's just load up on a guy who doesn't have to start this year, but could start next year. And I've got two good options at a premium position that I like as players, Garrett Williams and Eli Ricks. Um, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. I'm going to take Eli Ricks just for fun. Boop. And just like that, because the Cowboys have done what they're supposed to do in free agency and trading, we get to pick the best players and we end up really happy. Because when you pick the best players, there's a better chance you get a good player. Who would have thought? So there is you, a mock draft. Dun, 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 dun. All right, let me get up out of here. 
stop sharing screen. Thanks, guys, for kicking it with me. I appreciate you. Uh, I'm actually going to be on, depending what time you watch this video, here at 4 o'clock, I'll be on 97 One The Freak with my friends on the downbeat, Mike Saroy, Mike Reiner, Danny Bayless, and Groobs. And we're going to talk Cowboys football. Uh, make sure you're listening every morning, 97 One The Freak, 7 to 11 a.m. for myself, Kevin Turner, Julie Dobbs, and Matt Cather. We are the Speakeasy on 97 One The Freak. And you can hear that on the iHeartRadio app if you're out of the DFW listening area. Mm, mm. Mm -hmm. I'll try to get some more content up here on the YouTubes and whatnot for you guys. You know, I've been slacking, but life's been busy. Uh, remember, you have no idea what anybody's going through, so be cool to everyone. I love you. Bye.